especially to have our young people, which, uh, which is really on our hearts right now. So I believe that we are going to be blessed and have an amazing time. So we are going to have our worship leaders to take us into a time of worship. So I encourage each and every person to just press. Just as I am, 
and say yes. Yes, to freedom. Oh, I say yes. Yes. Oh Lord, I say yes. I say yes. Yes, to your heart and all of the healing. Your ways are high. Lord, I surrender. Become you just as I am. And say yes, oh, yes to Jesus. You will rebuild. You will restore. God, I believe you are who you say you are. You will repent. You will restore. God, I believe you are who you say you are. You will repent. You will restore, God, I believe you are who you say you are. I say yes, yes, yes to your love, yes to your freedom. I say yes, God, yes to your heart and all of you. Your ways are higher, Lord, I surrender, become you just as I am, and say yes, yes to Jesus, you will rebuild, you will restore. God, I believe you are who you say you are. You will rebuild. Let's make a declaration. You will restore. God, I believe you are who you say you are. You are who you say.
Amen. Wow. Jason, are you feeling blessed? Wow. Yes to freedom. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I love that song. Uh, is that uh, an original song, Ariella and Chevelle? If you guys are there. Ariel, is, is it a cover? <laughs> it's a cover. <laughs> oh, man, you guys rock that song. <laughs> Maybe you could just tell us a little bit about your, your worship. And do you have any music that you've recorded? And maybe it's out there on YouTube and covers, you know? <laughs> well, no music recorded yet. However, there are things in the working, you know, and as God, everything is coming together. Um, wow. Lord is just in the center of everything, and I trust Him as He. Amen. And before you before you mute your mic, I just want to get a quick word from Chevelle. She's the uh, the quiet one, but they say dynamite comes in in small packages. <laughs> yeah, <sorry>. oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you are you blessed, Chevelle? Are you are you enjoying the worship? Yes, I really enjoyed the worship. It was. Awesome, awesome. I see that you guys probably have been singing together for a while because that those harmonies are so, so tight and they're so together. And uh, am, am I right in saying that? Yes, we grew up singing together. I think that's ah. worship. household of worship. <laughs> <laughs> well, what a blessing. What an amazing blessing. So if you just tuned in, this is a... Uh, special broadcast uh, for the nations. And as you just heard, praise and worship from uh, Trinidad and Tobago. Bianca, wow, a truly global for the nations uh, program that you put together. And I just want to say to viewers out there, Bianca is doing a phenomenal job. Uh, she messages me all the time. Hey, make sure this video is done. Get that done. And yeah, it gets done. <laughs> I, to, I think I'll keep on wowing at you guys because I'm so in awe of, uh, I think, just the grace that you guys carry and the presence of God that that's within you and exudes through you. That was, it was so touching. That was the first time I heard that song, um, but so, so beautiful. And um, I think that the words amazing. really resonate. <laughs> was that an original, you guys? What? <laughs> that was well, amazing. <laughs> I, I just want to add this. You know what? You got the whole of Trinidad and Tobago watching on the other side. <laughs> so because on the other side, here's what they're saying. Uh, let me hopefully I can get this very quickly. Uh, we have Youth Fires. This is an original. Amen. Encourage wow. yourself. Karen C. Rowley. I hope I get I get that pronunciation right. And Ronaldo, we also have Diane. Uh, we have yeah, uh, Charmaine Noel as well. So we have such amazing people all the way from guess guess it Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> Encourage yourself. <laughs> wow, I, you guys should let us know when that's out because. We'll definitely be supporting and backing you guys. That was, that was, maybe Amen. you can make a voice note just for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, amazing, you guys. Thank you so much. And um, I definitely feel like the song resonates, especially with us um, as young people. Um, I think our panel today, Jason, we are all really young, which is so amazing to see how God is working through us. And, um, I think a lot of the time as young people, we hold ourselves in contempt about our past mistakes and where we sinned and where we've fallen short and where we try to run from God. And sometimes the devil keeps throwing all the lies in our faces, um, but God calls us by our name and not by our sin. And so mm -hmm. I think it's, it's really an encouragement, uh, the song and what our young people are doing today is that God is with us. He is standing at our window and he's he's watching, he's watching it all. He loves us. And I I really hope today that our young people, our old people, everyone who's watching can can know and not hold themselves in contempt for what's happened. God loves you. He's forgiven you. 
Um, and so we shouldn't hold ourselves in that place of sin and unforgiveness any longer. Um, and so with saying that, I would love to welcome our pastor, Jesse. And uh, this week we got a chance to, to talk and to share about uh, his ministry and what he's doing in Trinidad and Tobago. And for me, it's so cool to talk to Pastor Jesse because um, we were saying that I, I'm an online teacher and so I get to speak with people from all over the world. Um, but I haven't hit Trinidad and Tobago yet. And so now I've done it. <laughs> I can check it. <laughs> it's, another, <laughs> it's another one of my connections and it's so awesome. And I was telling him that the accent is really so cool as well, Jason. <laughs> I think it's so awesome. And Pastor Jesse, being as young as he is, is doing so much for the young people because that's what's on his heart. And he's um, got youth fires as well, which he will share and tell you guys about. Um, and so I hope everyone will be blessed uh, by the word that God has laid on his heart tonight for us. Thank you so much, uh, Bianca. Thank you so much, uh, Jason and, and Chrisan. My God, I was beyond touched by that testimony. Um, I love testimonies. And uh, I always tell people my life and, and life of my family, we are all living testimonies of the goodness of God. And I know that testimony just really pierced the hearts of a lot of people who are tuned in right now and, and who will tune in. Um, it was so anointed and, and, and Christian, my God, you're a blessing. And even while Jason was so led to pray for us, I, all I was saying while I was saying a testimony was like, wow, we need to pray. We need to pray for this person. And anyway, let's, let's, let's get with what we're doing today. I am Pastor Jesse and yes, as you heard, we're from Trinidad and Tobago. I'm so delighted to be with you guys. Uh, for those who are watching from South Africa and around the world, it's a pleasure. And when I was speaking to Bianca, and even before when we were corresponding via text, you know, she said, she would like me to be on and to discuss freedom. But I'm the type of person, I, my, my memory is kind of short. I forget sometimes. <laughs> so I, you know, I, I kind of forgot what the topic was. But I was like, you know, Holy Spirit, give me a word. What, what word would you have for these people, for the nations? And he gave me the word demarcation. I hope you guys are writing these things down. Huh? Demarcation. And I was like, okay, God, demarcation. What, what does this mean? And then he led me to the scripture of Zechariah, the, the, the book of Zechariah. And I was like, okay, God, where are you going with this? Where are you going with this? And, and then I spoke, with, I spoke with Bianca. She's like, well, we're speaking on freedom. So I was like, oh, wow, that's amazing. God is good. <laughs> because what I'm about to read to you in the book of Zechariah, and we're reading from Zechariah chapter 1. That's where we're going to be sticking in uh, for the time that we're on here. And we may go into chapter 2 a little bit as well. It speaks about freedom. I was like, God, wow, you're amazing. I couldn't have thought that on my own. It's all you. So that's what we're going to speak about today, okay? So I hope you guys are ready. So as I said, we're in the book of Zechariah. And we are talking about demarcation. And I just found it so amazing that even the scripture uh, Christian referenced in Hebrews, speaking about uh, that race and speaking about God has marked out a path for us. Right now, the Olympics is going on. So we know there are a lot of races happening, right? And God has marked out a path for us as believers in Jesus Christ. So just bear that in mind as we go ahead today. So we're reading in Zechariah chapter 1, and we're going to read from verse 16. Okay, from verse 16. And it says, Therefore thus says the Lord, I am returning to Jerusalem with mercy. My house shall be built in it, says the Lord of hosts. But then when we think of Jerusalem, we think of, oh, well, isn't this where God is? Isn't this where his, his temple is? So then how is God saying here in Zechariah, my house shall be built in it? 
So that means there was a case, and if we if we know our Bible and we know the, the prophets that came before, it was a period where God was really, really angry with the children of Israel. But he was coming here and he was saying through Zechariah, I am returning to Jerusalem with mercy. My house shall be built in it. So now God is in a place where he wants to reestablish himself in our homes. Many of us, even where we are in Trinidad and Tobago, we are still under lockdown. And many countries in the world are still under lockdown. God wants to establish himself. And that's what he wants to do for this entire pandemic season we're in. He wants to establish himself in our homes. Scripture says our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. God wants to establish himself within our temples. So it goes on to say, and we're reading again from verse 16, and it says, And a severe line shall be stretched out over Jerusalem. When you hear that word surveyor's line, you think again of that scripture in Hebrews about that path being marked out. And then there is where our title came from, demarcation. When we hear demarcation, it speaks of the action of fixing the boundary or limits of something. So then, okay, Pastor Jesse, but I thought we we're supposed to be speaking on freedom. And then you are, you're coming to tell us about limits, about a boundary. How, how, how does that relate? But in the word of God, it says it here, and a severe line shall be stretched out over Jerusalem. Don't get ahead of me. I know you prophetic people are already getting ahead, thinking that, yes, we are free, but God still has boundaries. And you guys are from South Africa. You guys are supposed to know some cricket, right? <laughs> <laughs> there are boundaries. No, you don't. Yeah, I mean, come on. You know about cricket. There are boundaries, even in, in the sports. So we have to understand the importance of having boundaries. So let's read on in verse 17. And it says, again, proclaim, saying, thus says the Lord of hosts, my cities shall again spread out through prosperity. Wow. Who's receiving this? My cities shall spread out through prosperity. It's been really difficult this last year and six months. Financially, it's difficult in the natural, even what, of what you guys face in South Africa recently over the last two, three weeks. It has been a challenge, but God is saying here, his cities shall spread out through prosperity. I think we have to receive that. The Lord will again comfort Zion and will again choose Jerusalem. Huh. His original intent, his original intent. He's saying he will comfort Zion and he will choose Jerusalem. We have to see ourselves as believers in Jesus Christ, as spiritual Israel. So we have to see ourselves as the one who God is saying he will choose you. He will choose me. He will choose us as a people, a chosen generation. Many of you are young watching this. Many of you are young at heart watching this. God is choosing us. He's, he's literally created a space and a time over this last year and six months for us to find ourselves in that place where we can now be free in the things of God. Demarcation, the action of fixing the boundary or limits of something. We want to know in, 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 in the world in general, there's a speed limit, right? In everything that we do, there's a limit. So then we have to also understand in the freedom in the word of God says, who the sun sets free is free indeed. But we have to understand we are now free from sin. It doesn't mean, oh, I could go and do whatever I want because now I have God on my side. No, it now means we are 
free from oppression. We are free from addiction. We are free from the from the from the holds of, of, of family and friends that want to spew and say evil things about us. We are now free from the shackles of sin. I said we were sticking in chapter one now. We're going to chapter two. Let's go to chapter two. So we're reading Zechariah chapter two, and uh, let's read from verse one. And it says, then I raised my eyes, and this is Zechariah speaking here, and looked, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. Wow. So I said, where are you going? And he said to me to measure Jerusalem to see what is its width and what is its length. In this time, over this last year and a half, God has been watching. He has been observing. And he wants to see where we are at right now spiritually. What is our relationship with our Heavenly Father right now? He's coming out with this measuring line to see, okay, yes, this is where my son, this is where my daughter is. But this is where they need to be. We have to understand, because many of us feel, uh, and we limit God. That's what we do. Because in our mind, we confine him to this box. We place this glass ceiling on God. We have to understand that this is the God who created the heavens and the earth. The universe is countless. They can't, they can't even... They can't even think how far. They can't even fathom how far the universe is. And God just created that to show his glory. So we need to understand that the God we serve is able beyond measure to come through for us in the season we are in, but as well for the future. We can't just think for now. We can't just be in a place of, oh, my God, I, I don't know how I'm going to survive this season. I don't know how, how I'm going to get over, how I'm feeling depressed, uh, or how I'm feeling condemned. How, 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 God, do I then come closer to you? When God is saying, do you not see the length and the breadth of my kingdom? Wow. <laughs> do you not see the length and breadth of the kingdom of God I have created you to be in? It's beyond the horizon. We need to look prophetically to see where our lives are going to be for his honor and for his glory. The scripture says here to measure Jerusalem. So it's literally, okay, think about it, of you having your own home and you having your own uh, area in your home, the perimeter of your home, right? We're using a natural example. Do you just stay in one place in your house, in your little room? Or do you have the ability to go through your home, to the corners, to the edges? You have the freedom to move around in your own home. You have the freedom to move around in your sphere of influence. So we need to understand that the God we serve, the God we serve, God is spirit. As we have that connection with him, we will see beyond those boundaries. We will see beyond those uh, measurements that we create for the God we see. So let's go on. We're reading verse three now. Zechariah chapter two, and we're reading verse three. Let's get through this as quickly as we can. And there was an angel who talked with me going out. And another angel was coming in. And he said to him, run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls. My God. Jerusalem shall, my God. Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls because of the multitude of men and livestock in it. The multitude of blessings and prosperity that is going to come our way because of our obedience to God. You know, these guys are called for the nations. It means that we speak and we reach beyond 
what is in the natural. We go beyond. That is what we must see in the spirit realm, that God has a treasure trove. He has an abundance of blessings, just as with Abraham. We're beyond the walls. There's no walls because of how much men, and when we see men there, then we're thinking of souls that are going to come in to know Christ. But also, it, it, says, uh, it says the sheep as well, the livestock. So that is the blessing. That's the prosperity that's going to come our way. My God, who, who's holding on to that? Who's holding on to that? Who's willing to receive that? My God. And verse 5 says, For I, says the Lord, will be a wall of fire all around her, and I will be the glory in her midst. My God. God is going to create his boundary for us. A wall of fire that's going to purify us. That's constantly going to purify our hearts, purify our motives. But it's also going to block the enemy. It's going to block all those predators who are on the outside that will want to come in. It will scorch and it will destroy. But we have to find ourselves in the midst. God is saying that we have to find ourselves in that Jerusalem. We have to find ourselves in that protective perimeter. That's why he created it. That's why he created it to protect us. You know, I think back to... Uh, I hope you guys get this reference, uh, you know, during the, the cowboy times in, in, in the West in America, you know, and they had this wagon, the wagon trails, right? And, and, and when the native Indians would, would want to attack, you know, these, this wagon train, what they will do is that they will create a perimeter, they'll create a, a circle of these, these wagon trains to try to block out the, the, the native Indians from coming in and attacking, right? So we have to understand that God is literally creating that barrier, that shield. Yeah, he's creating that shield with his angels, with his blood, with his fire, with intercessors. And that's the thing about it. And they're not facing inwards because if an attack is coming, can your back be turned to the attack? No, but we are facing outward. We are looking for where the enemy will want to attack. Because we need to protect those from within. Wherever you're watching this, South Africa, Trinidad, whichever part of the world, we have to protect our nation. We have to pray for our nation. We have to intercede for our nation. It's our duty. It's a mandate God has given us as a chosen generation, as a Joshua generation, as a militant generation to take on the enemy. We don't just... We're, and we're not just waiting for attack to happen. We have to be proactive in the things in the spirit. So let's go on to verse 10, right? We're still in Zechariah, and we're going to read verse 10. And, and here's what it says, right? We, we're speaking about boundaries. We're speaking about limits. But it says here, sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. For behold, I am coming, and I will dwell in your midst, says the Lord. Ha, here we go. Many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day. My God. And they shall become my people. And I will dwell in your midst. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts shall Sorry, and it says, and that the Lord of hosts shall send me to you. My God, it is so powerful. Nations shall come together. There shall be a uniting. There shall be a uniting. There shall be a uniting. People of like spirit shall be united from the ends of the earth because God is doing something and he's saying he will be in the midst of it because we are now a people of God without walls <laughs> we're a people of god without walls hallelujah let's go let's go we're getting close to our wrapping up time here and it says and the lord will take possession of judah and his inheritance in the holy land and will again choose jerusalem ah and here if you haven't heard anything i said before hear this part be silent all flesh. 
before the Lord, for he is aroused from his holy habitation. It speaks about being silent. And we need to understand that when the haters and the naysayers and the conspiracy theorists and everybody will want to come up in this season, as believers in Jesus Christ, we need to understand that we don't fight against flesh and blood. But we fight against those principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and, 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 weak, and wickedness in high places. We need to understand that. So as God is saying, as we are in that protective zone with God, that we are to be silent, all flesh, all flesh, because flesh will want to rise up. We have to be silent. We have to be silent. Very quickly as we close, let's go across to John 8, 34. John 8, 34. Amen. Hallelujah. And it says, Jesus answered them, most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. My God, a son abides forever. We are speaking about God coming back and, and building himself in Jerusalem and building himself in our homes. Our foundation is the word of God. The word of God is our foundation. And God is saying here that he abides with those sons who are not a slave to sin. And in this season that we understand we're speaking about freedom, there's still a demarcation. There's still a territory that God has created. He say, yeah, be free. Be free in that zone. Be free as much as you want. But do not be a slave to sin. The children of Israel, the children of Israel, in their minds, they thought they had a sense of freedom in Egypt. It took a whole generation being in the wilderness, 40 years, until God could then use this new generation, this Joshua generation, to take them in to that promised land, flowing of milk and honey. That Canaan, are we willing as the people of God to enter into that season? Because it says in 36, therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. My God, you shall be free indeed. And right now, I know there's a, there's, a, there's a season to, there's a time to pray, but I just feel that just right now, as I close, to just pray very quickly, Lord Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up before each and every person who, who was able to hear this word, Lord Father, that they take it, my God, into their spirit, that they, are, that they receive it into their spirit right now, that they understand that you have created even right now a garden. You've put a fence around this garden for them, Lord, and you're telling them, tend and keep it, just as it was with Adam at the beginning of time. Father, you created this Eden and you told Adam to go and to name all the animals. You told Adam to go and to tend and to keep this Eden. Lord Father, just so it has done, you've done it before, you are doing it again and you're doing it into the hearts of the men and women of God who are on right now because that veil has been torn. That veil has been torn. So I pray, Lord Father, for an increase in the relationships between, Lord, your sons and daughters and you right now, that they understand that your fire, my God, is there to purify. Your fire is there to cleanse. Your fire is there, oh God, to restore, to renew, to strengthen. So even now, Father, that the feet of these saints of God will be on fire for you, even as their foundation is the word of God even as the foundation is the word of God, my God, even as the foundation is the word of God, we seal it all with the blood of Jesus, with the blood of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen and amen. I love the Amplified, uh, Pastor, which uh, Zechariah chapter 2, uh, verses 5 says, For I say, for I, says the Lord, will be to her a wall of fire, around about and i will be the glory in the midst of her 
tonight you have you have the wall of fire around you uh you know we we we, we trust the medicals we listen to what they're saying and uh but i believe god is god is a wall of fire around you wherever you are whatever you're facing right now maybe you have a loved one that is in hospital on life support and you're you you are I don't know, you, you're feeling, how do I get from this place to that place of faith? I want to encourage you that Psalms 91 is so prophetic and including Zechariah chapter two, verses five, which you've just heard right now, that God has indeed his eyes set on you. So don't give up. Don't cave in. Your breakthrough, your miracle, your healing, your salvation, your financial breakthrough could be just at the tip of the corner. So don't break, don't give up, don't cave into whatever is happening around you. And as we go into a time of prayer, we've just received a, uh, a prayer request. So I'm gonna get Pastor Jesse while he is in the spirit of praying to pray for Christine's dad. His name is Rudy. He's under, uh, undergone an operation recently and he's picked up COVID in the process. So he now has pneumonia septicemia and a stroke completely paralyzed Pastor Jesse on the right side of his, of his body. He can't talk at all. And there's a clot in his lung as well. Uh, so sure. could you kindly play, pray for Rudy? He's based here in South Africa. Jesus, my God, my God. Father, even right now, and, and even as uh, yes, yes, yes. Even as that, 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 that spirit of healing, even right now, as it was, it was released through that testimony of Chrisan. So even right now, Holy God, even as you did it with Chrisan and you did it with Chrisan's mother, Father, we call upon your healing power right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, you died on the cross for Rudy in the name of Jesus. You shed your blood. Father, it says, as they pierced your side, blood and water came out. And Lord, Father, even right now, we pray, oh God, that your blood, even right now, will touch and crown from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. And we decree and declare healing in the mighty name of Jesus. That, Lord, Father, we reverse the stroke in the name of Jesus. We remove pneumonia in the name of Jesus. Lord, Father, even as I have seen you do it before, I know you will do it again. So even right now, we, Lord Father, speak into the life. We speak into his life right now in the name of Jesus. We speak life. We speak strength in the name of Jesus. That your blood, your blood, your blood will even replace. That there will be a spiritual blood transfusion right now in the name of Jesus. That Lord Father, we in right now we prophesy this testimony and we prophesy this miracle. Lord Father, we see it in the future. We pull it into now, right now in the name of Jesus. Even as Lord Father, people are standing in the gap for him his life lord that he will be a testimony he will be a testimony of your glory lord father he will be a testimony lord father where many souls will come to know you through his healing in the mighty name of jesus that lord father he will even begin to feel a heat all over his body even right now and lord father he shake it that about it just in the instance he will get worried and he will be scared but 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 after, Lord, he will begin to feel that it is your warmth. It is your warmth. It is your warmth. And you are removing, Father, that your breath, you're even breathing your breath even right now into his lungs. Lord, Father, you're giving him that oxygen. You're giving him that oxygen, Lord, Father. Isaka, that even right now, Isaka, that about his, 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 his brain and his, the neurons in his brain, Lord Father. Lord Father, everything that has been affected because of the lack of oxygen to the brain will be restored in the mighty name of Jesus. And we seal it and we seal it. And we thank you, oh God, even right now for the healing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Psalms 27 says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is a stronghold of my life. I'm going to get uh, Chrisanne at this moment to kindly pray for Jesse Clark, um, Jesse Clark's mom, in your prayers. Um, she has a bacterial infection, and uh, they are praying currently, Chrisanne, for the medication. 